Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today I want to talk X-Wing. Specifically, what ships should you get if you're new to Star Wars X-Wing? Well, let's say that you've never played the original game before, and you saw X-Wing 2.0, and you're like, wow, this looks cool. What ships should I get? There's so many to choose from. Well, I just want to warn you, this game can get crazy expensive. There are a lot of miniatures. Now, to be fair... Almost every miniature game out on the market is crazy expensive because you're going to be buying, oh, I want that, I need three of that, I need four of this, one of the, you know, it's just, it compounds. So, unless you're willing to spend $100 plus on this game, you may not want to dive into it. I'm not trying to shy you away from it, I'm just saying it's expensive, so if you're going to get into this, just be warned that your pocketbook may yell at you from time to time. So um, if you're new to the game and you want to know what ships to get, now this is my opinion. There's no hard and fast rule here, but this is what I think would be a good set of starting ships for you if you're new to the game. So I'm going to be toggling back and forth between the Fantasy Flight X-Wing Squad Builder, which is free on the Fantasy Flight website, and this YASB 2.0 Squad Builder. The reason why I like this is because on the bottom right-hand corner of any ship that you select, um, it'll tell you where you can get it. The Fantasy Flight app doesn't do that. If I click on New Squad, for example, and I'll, I'll go back, but um, let's say I pick this B-Wing, okay, uh, and then I add it to my squad. It, it doesn't tell me anywhere where this came from. What what pack do you have to buy in order to get this ship? The Fantasy Flight doesn't, the website does not tell you that. So I like this website because it tells me under sources where you can buy it. Okay, so I'm going to be flopping back and forth between the two of them. So anyway, getting back to this. Now there are Again, this is for new players now. You experienced people know this already. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven factions. In X-Wing, um, I believe there was only... It's been so long. Uh, I think there were possibly two factions to start with, and then I think Scum was added later. So there were three factions in the original X-Wing game. Um, Boba Fett was actually part of the Imperials and all that jazz, but they've separated almost everything out, and now you've got seven factions. My advice to you is stick with the Rebels and stick with the Galactic Empire if you're new to the game. There's a couple of reasons for this. Reason one, the core set, the, the original X-Wing 2.0 box that you're going to be buying has one Rebel X-Wing, and two Imperial TIE Fighters, so Rebel Alliance, Galactic Empire. So you're going to be buying ships that complement those factions, so that's one reason. The other reason is, if you're an old fart like me, these other factions didn't exist way back when. I grew up playing X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, X-Wing, TIE Fighter, Rebel Alliance, all of them games on the computer, and there were no Resistance, First Order, Galactic Republic, Separatist stuff back then. I grew up with the Rebel Alliance and the Galactic Empire, the original three movies. Those are the ships that I'm familiar with. X-Wings, Y-Wings, A-Wings, B-Wings, and then TIE Fighters, TIE Interceptors, TIE Bombers, Assault Gunboats, TIE Defenders, TIE Advanced. All those ships I grew up with, those are the ones I know. And then later on, of course, you've got Scum and Villainy. Um, th those aren't too bad. But I'm less familiar with the Scum and Villainy side of things than I am with the, the two core factions. So that's the second reason why I recommend sticking with these two. So, okay, so you've got these two factions in mind. What ships do you want to buy? Rebel Alliance. So um, there are a ton of ships. There's the B-Wing. There's the ARC-170 Starfighter, the Assault Shuttle or the attack shuttle, the Azatuck gunship, which is a Wookiee gunship. Um, it's good, don't get me wrong. It's just, it's not a ship that I grew up with. The Y-Wing, classic. K-Wing, E-Wing, the Hawk 290, uh, Karan Horn, I think, was featured in Shadows of the Empire, I think. It was on the N64. Anyway, um, modified YT-1300, the A-Wing, this Shelthipede class shuttle, X-Wing and TIE Fighter, which, again, it's 
this is like a TIE fighter that's special to the Rebel Alliance. I guess I didn't watch Star Wars Rebels with uh, Sabine Wren and Ezra and uh, Captain Rex. I think those were created later. I'm guessing they had a special TIE fighter that they used. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll watch it. Vinny, my son, is more familiar with that than I am. But anyway, there's the U-Wing and the YT-2400 again. Um, some of these ships you'll be familiar with, others not so much. My advice is uh, stick with the basics. Um, there is an X-Wing in here somewhere. There we go. So let's go ahead and close this one out. So there's the X-Wing pack. So in addition to the X-Wing that you get with the core set... There's also a separate T-65 X-Wing pack that you can buy separately. And the reason why there's why you'd want that extra pack is because A, you get two X-Wings, and B, the pilots are different. Uh, and this is why I'm going to switch over to the other website now, because it actually tells you where they come from. Let's go ahead and open up the Rebels real quick, and then we'll pull up the X-Wing. Okay, so under this, there are a number of different pilots that come with these, uh, that comes with this ship. Luke Skywalker, if you look on the bottom right-hand corner, sources, second edition, core set. Okay, so Luke Skywalker is a pilot that you would get with the core set. However, Wedge and Tilly's, which is probably one of my favorite X-Wings in the game, um, comes with the um, T-65 X-Wing expansion pack. Now, don't worry about the conversion kit stuff. If you're new to the game, you're not going to know what that is. The conversion kit is simply... You own X-Wing 1.0, and you need to convert your stuff from 1.0 to 2.0. That's what, that's what that is. But if you're new to the game, you're not going to have any 1.0 stuff. So the T-65 X-Wing expansion pack, you're going to want the T-65 expansion pack for the other Rebel Alliance pilots, especially Wedge and Tilly's, who's really good. So I would recommend that. And the reason why you'd want us to buy another X-Wing is because when you're playing X-Wing for the first time, Everyone has different maneuvers. Uh, every, every, every ship, every, like an X-Wing, for example, has a different dial. If you look on the right-hand side, at speed one, it can make a slight blue turn or a straight blue maneuver. And you can see there's some red maneuvers. As you change ships, Y-Wings, A-Wings, they all can do different things. So I've always maintained that if you're new to the game, stick with one ship type. That way you're not getting confused with, well, I thought... I didn't know my Y-Wing could do this, and my X-Wing can do this instead, or, oh, that's right, that ship can do this, and this ship can do it a turn, and, and so, like, if you're new to the game, introducing all these different ships and all these different dials and all these different maneuvers all at once is overwhelming, in my opinion. So, stick with one type of ship, or maybe two types of ship going in, and then once you get used to those dials, then move on to other ship types and then see what they can do. So, that's what I would recommend, anyway. So the expansion that I would recommend is the T-65 X-Wing for the Rebel Alliance. Another one I would recommend is the BTL A-4 Y-Wing, another classic ship from A New Hope, was in the Death Star Trench Run, um, and you can see their maneuvers are very different. They don't go five speed, um, and a lot of their maneuvers are more stressful, so they can't make hard turns. Um, but the reason why you may want the Y-Wing even though it's kind of slower, it's also more tanky. It's got more health and more shields over here. That's The yellow is hull uh, value, and the blue value is shields. The reason why I recommend the Y-Wing is because it, it was one of the first ships in 1.0 to introduce turrets. Turrets are um, an, a cool weapon, secondary weapon, that you can add to your ship you can turn the turret in X-Wing 2.0 to face different directions, so you're not limited to firing out the front. You can turn your turret, shoot out different directions. The Y-Wing, I think, is a good solid choice to learning how turrets work because they, they work like an X-Wing in, in the sense that they're small, they move around, they can do different turns, but they've got this extra turret that um, can move and shoot. So I would recommend the BTL A4 Y-Wing as your secondary purchase for X-Wing 2.0. So that would give you two X-Wings and one Y-Wing to mess around with in your first couple of games, okay? And as far as upgrades are concerned, there are a lot of different upgrades that you could choose. As a new player, I recommend against equipping your ship with a ton of upgrades that are going to confuse you because the more upgrades you add to your ship, the more you have to keep in the back of your mind going, okay, this chains with this and I need a target lock to fire these torpedoes. Oh, I need 
I need to be the proton bombs launch during the systems phase, but activate during the activation phase. It's like you're you're gonna have system overload. You're gonna be you're gonna have enough trouble as a new player assigning dials and trying not to wreck into things. As the, you know, and and then you've got all these upgrades on top of it. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So um, as a new player. Stick with just the ship and maybe one upgrade, like as the X-Wing, upgrade, uh, just pick a torpedo. Uh, I would recommend just regular proton torpedoes. Um, let's go back over here so I'm not confusing you. Uh, Wedge Antilles, torpedo, there's proton torpedoes, plasma torpedoes. Some of these you can't get from the X-Wing expansion. We'll just stick with standard proton torpedoes and, and leave it at that. Don't worry about a adding all these different astromechs to your ships. Don't worry about... Uh, talents. Um, the X-Wing inherently has an ability to open and close S-foils so that you can boost when they're closed and um, attack regular attack strength when they're open. That and the proton torpedoes, I think, is going to be enough for a new player to, you know, keep in the back of their mind. So, um, two X-Wings, one Y-Wing. If you want to take an X, if you want to go the extra mile and you think you can handle one shit more, I would recommend the A-Wing, reason being there's an A-Wing expansion pack. The reason why you may want to choose an A-Wing is because um, the maneuvers, uh, this thing is weaker than the other ones in terms of it has less hull strength and less shields, but it, uh, it's also a lot more fast, a lot more fast. It has three agility as opposed to two, meaning it rolls three defense dice as opposed to two. And some of its maneuvers are crazy. It can do a five turn and face the other direction, like a 180. It can do a, sl a three sloop, meaning it'll go three turn and then face the other direction. So there's a number of things that the A-Wing can do that the X-Wings can't. It's faster. It rolls more defense dice. But the A-Wing requires a bit more skill because the faster the ship and the weaker, the more, the more glass cannon it is, the more you have to make sure that you're flying it correctly, so that you're if you if you run in if you if you take a, a ship that's that's really that's really weak and run it into stuff, it's not going to survive very long. Uh, the weaker, more agile ships depend on players to position them correctly to perform barrel rolls and boost so that they're in an advantageous position. Whereas with a, a regular X-Wing or Y-Wing, they're a little bit more tanky and you can afford to just go straight down the middle and start shooting. The A-Wings and the TIE Interceptors, the, the more agile ships, they sort of depend on you knowing how to fly. So if you want to check out the A-Wing, go ahead. Um, it's it's It wouldn't be my first recommended choice but it would be something to try out so two x-wings a y-wing and a possible a-wing um also the modified yt which is you know han solo's millennium falcon now it's not a falcon unless you add the title yes you can add titles to this game the millennium falcon title while you defend if you are evading you may re-roll re -roll one defense dice that kind of thing um, there are, this thing will give you even more options. Uh, it's very tanky. It has one agility, but it also has a turret that lets you uh, either shoot out the front or back or the sides. So, um, again, like the A-Wing, it requires a bit more skill, but this thing's tanky enough to where you can just right down the middle, start shooting stuff and hopefully you hit something. Um, so again, Two X wings, Y wing, possible A wing, maybe the the YT thirteen hundred. I would start there with the Rebel Alliance. So I think that's enough. That's at least one hundred and fifty, two hundred bucks right there. <laughs> um, okay, so then the Galactic Empire. You um, the Galactic Empire ships are by far one of the more cheaper ships in the game. Uh, Tie fighters, for example, aren't that expensive. You're going to be fielding more Tie fighters than you would X wings because they've got less hit points. They have no shields. Um, so in the core set, you've got two TIE Fighters, um, and again, I'm going to switch over to this other website because it actually tells me where they come from. So if I pull up the TIE Fighter here, once I find it, there we go. And then we'll choose, say, HAL Runner. HAL Runner is part of the, uh, TIE Fighter expansion pack. HAL Runner is probably one of the most popular TIE Fighters there are. Um, it's probably one of the more expensive ones to field, but at the same time, it has a very powerful passive ability 
While a friendly ship at range 0 to 1 performs a primary attack, that ship may reroll one attack die for free. So this ship acts like a, a, a hub for all other ships around it. And every ship around it can re-roll attack dice, which is really good. So HAL Runner is a very popular TIE Fighter to, to field, and you can only get it if you buy the TIE Fighter expansion pack. You're not going to get it in the core set. Um, in the core set, you'll get Aiden Versio. That's the second edition core set there. Um, looks like Scourge here can only be uh, acquired in the TIE Fighter expansion. Muller Mythal expansion... Um, there's only a couple, really. Um, let's see. Night Beast, second edition core set. Okay, so Night Beast is in the second edition. So the TIE Fighter expansion will really add five, six pilots, probably more, that you'll need, um, in order to field a decent set of TIE Fighters on the Imperial side. So I would recommend two of these TIE Fighter expansion packs. Uh, that way you've got four TIE Fighters to mess with, and again... Keeping with the same ship class will lead to less confusion when you're looking at dials. Uh, it's very easy to mix things up. Sometimes I'll, I'll do it. I've got a TIE Interceptor, a TIE Fighter, a TIE Bomber, and, I, and I'm planning my moves, and I'm putting my dial down. I'm, oh, 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 I'm sorry. This, this, I put the TIE Bomber dial next to the TIE Interceptor, and you know it's, it's easy to get them confused. So I would stick to one fighter uh, type. So two TIE Fighters as the um, Imperials. And I would also recommend, I'm going to switch back to this, a uh, TIE Interceptor. Um, the TIE Interceptor is similar to an A-Wing. So this may not be an ideal first pick, but um, TIE Fighters are good in their own right to the point where it'll it, it's a good it'll be a good teaching tool to get you used to how faster ships fly and again these faster agile ships require you to perform barrel rolls and boosts to get you into a favorable position so i do recommend a tie interceptor um just one as a starting ship so that you can get used to how boosts and barrel rolls work and and trying to keep these weaker ships alive. Again, these ships, the TIE Fighters, the TIE Interceptors, they don't have shields. So they're more susceptible to critical hits and they die more quickly. But because of that, they have they, they take less points to field in general. So there's that. Um, I would also recommend a TIE Bomber. Um, TIE Bombers are a bit more tanky. And um, they kind of act like X-Wings in the sense that, you know, you can load them up with torpedoes. They also have missiles, which the X-Wings don't have. So you can load them up with torpedoes and shoot torpedoes with them. Um, they Their maneuvering is kind of crappy, but um, it's not... It's not as bad as other ships are. They can still make hard turns and they not be red. They're not bad. Okay, so I would recommend a TIE Bomber or two um, and then load them up with torpedoes and give it a go. Um, so two TIE Bombers just so you can get used to, you know, shooting torpedoes as the Empire. Um, if there was any other ones I would recommend, um, I would... There is something called Force in this game. Again, new players know this, um... Or no, new players don't know this. Experienced players will know this. Um, TIE Advanced. Now, there's two of them. There's the TIE Advanced Version 1 and the TIE Advanced X1. Now, I'm biased. I like my TIE Advanced X1 because Darth Vader's in it. Um, it looks like a TIE Advanced from the games that I know. And Luke Skywalker in the core set will introduce a concept called Force. Force does a number of things, but primarily it lets you change a focus result into either a hit or an evade result, depending on whether or not you're attacking or defending. There are also force powers that you can equip to your ship that that suck your force power uh, dry. So, like this force power, um, I could assign sense to Darth Vader, and then every time I use it, I'll have to spend a force to do it. Whatever. So, um... As the Empire, in the core set, there is no Force ability that I know of. Um, Luke Skywalker has it in the core set, but I don't think any of the Empire ships do. If you want to try Force out as the Empire, then I would recommend getting the TIE Advanced X-1, which is Darth Vader's you know, TIE Advanced. There's also some other ones like Merrick Steel, Ved Fos Foslo, and so on. Um, there are other ships 
Um, the Thai Advanced V1, that's your Grand Inquisitor, Fifth Brother, Seventh Sister, Inquisitor, and so on. Some of these guys have Force as well, so it might be worth checking out. I would still recommend the Thai Advanced X1 personally, but that's just me. Um, these other ones, now I'm going to recommend this one only because I'm biased and I love the Thai Phantom. There is a video game called uh, Rebel Assault 2 which was a full motion video back in the day, was all the rage. And this ship lets you cloak. As a new player, cloaking is a new concept. It may confuse you. I would not recommend jumping into a cloak for your very first game. Once you get used to your TIE Fighters and the TIE Interceptor and the TIE Bombers that you've purchased and possibly the TIE Advanced for Darth Vader and his Force, I would recommend checking out the TIE Phantom. The TIE Phantom has a unique ability. It lets you cloak. And when you cloak, you can decloak and you can sort of move left or right or forward before everyone moves. So you can catch people off guard. You can get into positions that other people normally couldn't. So it's, I guess this is more of an advanced ship, but I want to bring it to your attention as a possible purchase so that you can mess around with it because it's a really cool feature. And I'm biased, so I really like the TIE Phantom. I would not feel this for your first game. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, do not feel the TIE Phantom for your first game. Stick with your TIE Fighters, learn how the game is played. Once you get a couple of games under your belt and you want to want to try cloaking, check out the TIE Phantom. It's a really cool ship. I like it. There are other ones, I'm sure. Um, if you have a um, if you have a YT on the Rebel side and you want an equally tanky ship on the Imperial side. Check out the VT-49 Decimator. Um, this ship is really tanky. It has 4 shields and 12 hull, but it rolls 0 defense dice. So any sh any hits that go at it, for the most part, will hit. Um, it does have a reinforce ability, and I'm going to be confusing you new players. Reinforce will reduce the amount of hits you take by 1 every attack um, to a minimum of 1. So if three sh 3 hits hit you, and you're reinforced on that side. Only two, you'll t only take two damage. So it ha it does have ways to mitigate damage, but for the most part, it's going to take hits. Um, but it's very tanky, and if you like tanky, then look at the decimator. All right, so there you go, folks. Um, and again, that is not a hard or fast rule. It's just my recommendations. If you want to start off with the scum and villainy, more power to you. If you want to do first order and resistance, more power to you. But keep in mind. The core set has a Rebel Alliance and two TIE Fighter or two Galactic Empire ships in it. If you go with the Resistance in First Order, you're going to have to buy more ships so that you can equal your 200 uh, squad builder count. Now, if, if you're wondering how squad building works, go to the Fantasy Flight website and play around with the squad builder. The, um, the, the expansions in the core set also come with pre-filled out squad cards it'll say luke skywalker on it and it'll have upgrades on it already so it, it takes away all of the confusion of building your own squads and it'll just say here use this pilot here's its abilities um by nature have at it but if you're like me and you want to build things from scratch come to the fantasy flight website and give this a go just pick your faction hit next and then pick a ship B-Wings, you know, start adding stuff, and then pick your upgrades, pick different talents, read them, see what see what you like, see what you don't like, and then when you reach close to 200, stop, okay? So there you go. Hopefully you found this enjoyable. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.